start recording. Uh, so good afternoon to everybody. Welcome to this second day of uh, the virtual meeting uh, for uh, the uh, outcomes of round one of uh, the COVID-19 uh, MLIA Eval Initiative. Uh, yesterday we had uh, a general uh, introduction and uh, overview of the tasks and the uh, major outcomes. Today uh, and tomorrow we start to go into the details of what uh, our participants did. And uh, this afternoon we have uh, four uh, talks uh, about uh, mainly what happened in the multilingual semantic search task and also one talk uh, uh, about uh, what happened in the machine translation task. So uh, uh, as you see, as you know, uh, guys uh, from uh, uh, the previous emails, uh, you have a slot of 30 minutes, uh, but let's say that uh, the actual talk is 15, 20 minutes, uh, and then we have uh, another 15, 20 minutes for uh, uh, discussing uh, what, uh, what you did uh, all together, because the goal of the meeting uh, is uh, to transfer knowledge uh, among us, uh, to, to learn from each other what worked, uh, what didn't work, and uh, uh, how can we improve uh, in order to uh, do better uh, in, uh, in the next uh, round. Said that, the first talk is uh, uh, by Alberto Purpura and uh, he will present uh, what the University of Padua team uh, did. So Alberto, the stage is yours. Thank you, Nicola. All right, I'll share the screen. I can't if you stop if you don't stop sharing first. Oh, sorry. Uh, it's Khalid sharing. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Let me try again. Yes. Okay. We see your slide. Yeah. Thank you. Your slides. Yes. Okay. Great. Uh, all right. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Hi. I'm Alberto. I'm a PhD student from University of Padua. Um, from the IMS group, the Information Management Systems group. And yeah, I'm representing our group effort and all the people that you see listed here um, in this presentation where I'm gonna talk about yeah, how we computed the runs that we submitted to this COVID-19 MLIA evaluation effort. So our system, our, our strategy to compute these runs uh, was the following. So first of all, we I'm going to talk about the runs that we submitted to the multilingual semantic search task, task two, and in particular uh, to the subtask one, uh, where we were looking for runs with a high precision. So the, the system that we designed can be schematized with these three different stages. First one, like a pre-retrieval stage where we do document pre-processing and we try some query formulation uh, strategies. The second stage uh, where we perform retrieval and we use in this case different uh, pipelines relying on lexical or neural uh, IR models. And finally, last stage where we combine all different all the different runs that we computed with the at previous stages uh, with a rank fusion algorithm come sum. Uh, <clears throat> let's go through them. So very quickly, document pre-processing. Uh, we considered all the collections in the same way. And we just took the, con the textual content of the body tag of the HTML, like the uh, structured uh, document files, and we ignored the rest. So very simple pre-processing step. We didn't do much in this at this stage. At the same time, we also uh, asked uh, and collaborated with the students of the course of computer-assisted tools from the master degree in model languages for international communication and cooperation of our university and we asked them to help us providing some first of all identifying and then providing some terminological variations for the medical term contained in the keyword formulation of the topics we were able to do so for just a few languages five of all of the languages that we considered english french german italian and spanish is where the languages where the students were uh, fluent. And so we asked them to identify these medical terms and to provide some uh, terminological variations for each of them. And then we generated automatically different uh, query formulations, query variations 
by automatically replacing one term in each topic with uh, identified uh, variations. Here we see uh, a yeah the, the total number of reformulations that we are able to obtain for the different topics altogether for each of these languages. So for English, we had in total like one, over 1,000 different versions of all the topics together. Uh, French, just about 200. And uh, yeah, over 1,600 for Italian for obvious reasons. Uh, but yeah, we have quite a few hundred different formulations for these five languages. And we use them um, in the following way. So let's, okay, next slide. So yeah, in this first stage, so we did document preprocessing and we computed some query formulations for the queries. Second stage, we did retrieval. We did it using lexical models or neural models. For this stage regarding lexical models, since we didn't have any relevance judgments, any idea on how to evaluate and select the best retrieval pipeline, we decided to just compute, uh, just uh, try to run all of the possible retrieval pipelines that we could think of. So, here, we consider three different components of each retrieval pipeline that we tried for different languages. See the listed here, them listed here in these tables. So for German, for example, we considered uh, one, two, three, four, five different stop lists, uh, three different stemmers, and five different ranking functions. Consider so a total of 75 different retrieval pipelines relying on these lexical models. We repeated the same process for what we had available, like in terms of stop lists and, and stemmers for other languages. And we computed like between 20 and 75, uh, we were able to build between 20 and 75 different retrieval pipelines relying on lexical models. And so for each topic of each language, we computed all of these like 75, for example, runs for German uh, that we later merged. For English, uh, we also gave a shot, like uh, we, we tried to, to run, retrieve, to perform retrieval using neural models. And we relied on the Sledge framework, uh, which is like a, one of the many like variations to like models to perform uh, retrieval uh, based on Cybert. This is an approach developed by Georgetown University. And we use this model as it was, and um, it's uh, pre-trained models as well, as well, which are available online. So we had this model and two different pre-trained models, which were trained uh, one on uh, the whole MS Marco collection, and the second one on just the subset of medical documents within the MS Marco collection. Uh, this is what the authors gave us, and uh, we used that. We used these two models as as they were, and performed retrieval again also on the collection. And uh, the, the query variations. Once we computed all the different languages, how did we use all of these query variations and different pipelines? How did we put them together? We put them together following this strategy. So we uh, ran a two level um, rank fusion uh, strategy, like a system. Uh, we considered, like, for each topic, it's K query formulations where available. And uh, it's N different possible retrieval pipeline, lexical or neural, separately. Let's say all the lexical retrieval pipeline for the topic one of the German language. We computed all of these runs, and then we fused together uh, all of the lexical runs relative to each query variation, the first stage. So all of the N runs corresponding to the query variation number one, fuse them together using common sum. Uh, the, the, Rank fusion algorithms that we used, the implementation that we used was uh, the poly from the, the, the polyfuse uh, library. And we used the default parameters, since again, we, we had no way to tune the, the hyperparameters uh, for, for this collection and uh, domain. So we did this first fusion of these runs for each query variation. And then we need another fusion uh, where we fused the runs resulting from this previous step, again, using the comp sum rank fusion algorithm. So for all of the languages where we had query variations available, we conducted this like level rank fusion step. Um, for the languages where we did not uh, collect query variations, we just considered all of the lexical pipelines and we fused them together using comp sum at just one level. 
one level fusion. Uh, for the English language, where we had also the neural models, we decided to consider them separately since we didn't really trust them. So we didn't want to put them in this pipeline. So we considered them separately and we repeated this two stages uh, rank fusion approach. So we considered only two models per query formulation, fuse the runs, and then fuse the runs again for, all, for every query formulation that we computed for English. So again, same strategy, but just considering two neural models. The, the one model associated to the sledge model trained only uh, on the medical subset of documents of SMARCO, and the other model was trained on the whole NSMARCO collection. With this strategy, we um, computed a few runs and we, submit, we decided to submit in the end these few. So the first run that we submitted for all languages uh, was uh, the one I indicated here, the average precision of each run. Uh, here we see, uh, we use the BM25 retrieval model with default parameters, default stop list, default stammer for every language. And uh, we only consider the, uh, in, in this first column, we use the conversational and keyword formulation of, uh, of each topic. So a very verbose representation of the information need of the user. And we see uh, very good performance results just by using the verbose representation of a topic and the M25. Then uh, we also submitted this VC sum uh, run for a few languages where we had some query variations like the V, uh, some query variations available. And in this case, we applied that two stage uh, fusion strategy using query variations and only lexical models. And here we see that the performance is uh, definitely higher by a sizable margin compared to the CBM25, where we just used the one lexical model, ideally the best one. We couldn't say, couldn't tell. Uh, but um, yeah. so fusing together multiple lexical models gave us an advantage, especially when including query variations. What was the impact of query variations, though? We can see it if we compare this performance to the one in the third column when we didn't have query variations where we didn't use query variations and we just did a one level uh, fusion where we just use comp sum with all of the lexical runs using only the keyword formulation of each topic. Uh, and here we see the performance drops a little bit with query variations, but it's still in some cases higher than the performance of the alone using the conversational formulation of the query or the BM25 using the keyword uh, formulation of the query, which is in the following column, the fourth column, where we yeah, just use BM25 computed runs and evaluated them. Uh, for English, we also submitted a couple more runs where we use the sledge the neural model. In the second last column, we see the average precision of the um, of a of the sledge of the output of the sledge med model. So the Sledge model trained, pre-trained only on the subset of medical documents of MS Marco uh, without query variations. And uh, so it, it has just a 15 AP, which is very low. However, what is interesting to observe is that if we fuse uh, like uh, the run obtained with the, the runs obtained with both sledge models with query variations, with the result of the comp sum with query variations, again for English, we are able like with a three stage uh, fusion approach, we obtain like a slightly higher average precision. Uh, the margin is not so large, but we see that uh, neural models are not like not completely trashed. They, they can be useful and they can complete um, the, 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 the runs per, that can be computed with lexical models. We also, uh, ran a crowdsourcing, a small crowdsourcing experiment. We asked help, the help again of uh, the previous students, and we asked them to annotate a few documents just to have a rough idea of what runs to submit and uh, if using a crowdsourcing approach could be a viable way to, you know, come up with a, with a few runs that were actually the best performing um, according to more reliable relevance judgments. In this case, we report the agreement, with, uh, these measures like a weak, strong agreement or disagreement. And we see that the, the relevance judgments provided by our students 
overall, like for all of these uh, subset of languages, uh, they can provide a very good, strong agreement with official relevance judgments, strong and weak agreement. The, these measures are quite high. Uh, don't have a very high disagreement. There are two ex exceptions, the English and Italian language. Uh, but still, this these peaks are uh, still lower than the than the other languages, and still the strong agreement peak is still very high in these languages, nonetheless. So we um, consider this uh, these relevance judgments to submit uh, the the best runs to to the to the devaluation to to the organizers. And uh, yeah, in the end, after seeing the results and the comparison with the official relevance judgments. We kind of consider these um, crowdsourced uh, data quite reliable, at least to compute like a first um, selection between what are the best models and what are the worst models that we can ignore. So in conclusion, I try to keep my presentation short to leave space to questions and discussion. Uh, I think we can summarize our experiments and results in these four points. Uh, first of all, Without relevance judgments, if you can only run one system, BM25, at least according to our experiment, was still very good and the best solution. Uh, rank fusion is a very cheap and unsupervised like alternative to running just one system and performing rank fusion would come with come sum. We don't have any parameters to tune. We, we just use the default hyperparameters and uh, we're able to obtain fairly good results uh, with this, much higher than uh, just one lexical model alone. Uh, hiring a pool of experts to provide terminological variations for medical terms or for terms that are key to that domain or like what we care about uh, can be very useful. These, the, the, the usage of these uh, terminological variations gave us a huge boost uh, in certain languages. So that was very useful. And these variations were just different ways that you can call uh, coronavirus in our case, um, in uh, like in the spoken language or like on the daily basis, like how we call it, we call it, we call it Corona in Italian, like for short. So these kind of variations can be very useful when added to the user topics. And finally, neural models, neural IR, uh, everyone's talking about it. It can provide um, some um, advantage compared to lexical models, but only when supported by them, well, when, when, it's, when it's used in addition to lexical models and not by itself, at least according to our experiments and without domain specific training data or like huge, yeah, yeah very domain specific um, data to use for their pre-training and uh, yeah, and fine tuning or fine tuning, yeah. Okay, I think that's it from me. I'm very happy to take any of your questions. Uh, I'll keep sharing the screen if you want to go back, if you want me to go back to any slide, uh, otherwise I'll stop sharing, but I'll wait for the organizers to let me know. But yeah, I'll be happy to take any questions if you're curious uh, about Maria. what we did in the back. Maria is a question, so I think we can talk directly, Maria. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for the overview. It's very nice, insightful uh, and concise uh, kind of description of the approach. But I was thinking uh, uh, about this reformulations that you had because you had it in different languages, which gives an interesting perspective. And um, so I was thinking how comparable are, because I mean, I seen that you have like on this one of the slides, you have the different number of reform reformulations that you've collected, but um, how, I mean, I understand that they're in different languages, but how much, or do you have any idea? How much do they overlap? So like whether in German and uh, in French, you get the same words or, well, I mean, the direct translations, let's put it that way. So whether you can reuse these reform reformulations and then, um, and I mean, I see of course also that you have much more uh, for Italian because I assume there are much more native speakers in Italian. But is it because native speakers have more, um, like, I mean, there's more Corona related language, uh, uh, like words used or so, do you have a bit more of the details about that uh, reform, reformulation data? Uh -huh. 
Yeah, thank you for the question. I'll start answering. And then if there's any other teammate that work, work with me and wants to add anything, uh, it can feel free to, to add. So I, from, what, from what I've seen, uh, well, yes, of course, we have many more reformulations for Italian because the students were, in the end, like native Italian speakers, most of them at least. And so, uh, yeah, the, the majority of query formulations was were from there. I think uh, many of them were like regarding the spoken language. I had a look at the German ones. And uh, yeah, many of them were regarding like some really colloquial expressions. So I'm not sure that could be really a parallelism between the, the spoken language and be between different languages. So I'm not sure, maybe probably for a subset of them. Yes, like the medical terms, like more standard variations, definitely. But depending on the language, usually, you know, the language used by newspapers, always you can find a precise correspondence, especially for something like which is very new. Like I think uh, even the language didn't have the time to evolve like in a parallel way. Yeah, of kind course. Of, uh, it's taken in different ways. So uh, yeah, I, 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 have, I can say that there was some overlap, but only for the most official terms. For the rest, it was like very colloquial expressions. If okay. anyone else wants to add anything. Maybe Federica, uh, I see you are uh, connected. If you yeah. want to talk something about uh, the query formulation part. Yeah, actually, we, we just um, extract the uh, medical terms and we ask them to um, reformulate in um, um, orthographic uh, reformulation, such as, for example, uh, uh, coronavirus uh, with uh, the um, corona and virus uh, or uh, the, uh, all the single term. So um, query reformulation based on the orthographic uh, uh, orthographical viewpoint and uh, also semantic uh, variation. So for example, there were some students uh, who um, misconfused coronavirus and COVID-19. And so they, uh, uh, they used uh, these terms as semantic equivalents. And yeah, this was the, um, the, uh, the method for the reformulation. Okay, and, and the medical terms that you present, because you said that it was reformulation of the only of the medical terms, but you have uh, picked them manually. Yes. Uh, or, yes. Okay. Yes. Because the yeah the the the, um, the query uh, initially provided was very very short, so we mm -hmm. just uh, identify uh, manually. Okay. 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 Thank, you. Thank you, Federica. Any other questions, comments? So yes, yeah, yeah, sorry, <clears throat> I have a, a related question. Maybe I missed it. Uh, how many reformulation did you have per term, per query term? Were they equal for all the language or did you have more, let's say for Italian and English? <clears throat> so did you have, let's say, I three reformulation for German terms in, in, in general or? For certain languages where I guess like the students were very familiar with, uh, we had less reformulations for, for certain queries, definitely. It wasn't a uniform thing. For certain topics, we ended up having like very many, like 15, 20 reformulations. For others, were just a few, like five, six, uh, depending on the, yeah, the number of synonyms that the students could think of. but. Uh, yeah, it was very, very, there was a huge variance. The total number is, is large, but yeah, it was a huge variance between terms. Maybe it's worth for like some further overviews to have also a column with actual number of the terms that were given for a formulation. Because I mean, we have uh, 30 topics. And uh, so does it mean that you have 30 terms or do you have only like 10 of, so just to also get, get an idea that uh, indeed, uh, what is the variation? So it would be good to know how many terms you had to start with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for the suggestion. If, if it's not there yet, I think we will we'll try to add that. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, if I can jump in in the discussion, I just arrived from another meeting. Yes, since I uh, supervised together with Federica and students, yes, as you can see, of course, for Italian and English, we had many more variations just because, of course, students are Italian and most of them study English. 
But in general, as I could see from the raw data, there were terms like COVID or SARS-CoV that had many, many variations just because they are more familiar now. Some others had just made maybe one or two reformulations. So it's also a question of how the students or people are now used to uh, read some of these terms and relate them to, to, to some others. But we're studying, this will be part of uh, an additional study or further study uh, along the way. Uh, we were very surprised about some of the reformulations which took uh, uh, multi-word terms, complex terms, and reformulated them in a completely different and in uh, unexpected way, but in a clever way. Now, I do not have in mind that, but we saw one or two situations where truly we were surprised about the fact that maybe, I don't know, like surgical mask, they completely changed the view. It was, again, the idea of protection, but it was something different from a simple surgical mask. So we were interested in also studying this kind of reformulations. Okay, thank, thank you very you. much, uh, Alberto and uh, everybody. Uh, no thank you. Move to the next uh, talk by the Charles University in uh, Czech Republic. I think uh, Shadi will give uh, the talk. Uh, yep, thanks. Can you see my presentation now? Yes, sure. Uh, perfect. Thank you so much for the introduction. Hello, everyone. This is uh, Shadi Saleh. I'm postdoc in Charles University, and I'm presenting our uh, participation you in. May also turn on your screen, Shadi. Sorry. You may also turn on your screen if it is okay with uh, with you. Um. You mean the. The video. The camera. Ah, turn on the camera. Okay. Great, thank you. Yeah, just wanted to align the screen because I have little. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, I'm not sure if uh, if my presentation is um, unexpected today. I mean, I will present both machine translation and uh, our IR system. So if this is okay for the uh, agenda, is it? Yeah, yeah, easy, easy. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Uh, so. Um, Uh, our team participated in two tasks, the machine translation task and the multilingual uh, semantic search. Um, and actually, like our uh, multilingual semantic search task uh, relied on our uh, models that we trained on the first, uh, the first uh, task. So I'm going uh, to present our machine translation uh, 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 models first. In the machine translation uh, task, uh, we had the option to, uh, to design two systems, constraint systems and unconstrained systems. In the constraint systems, we could use the, only the data that uh, was given uh, from the uh, organizers, like not, not using any external uh, data. Uh, so we, um, we, uh, we used the, um, actually like the data contained around 1 million parallel sentences around COVID uh, domain, uh, and we used uh, this data to design um, uh, four models from English um, uh, uh, to uh, French, uh, German, Spanish, and Swedish. And also we used the same, the same data to design models in the other direction. So basically we have uh, empty models in both uh, directions. In the uh, unconstrained systems, uh, we used the uh, given data plus uh, the UFAL medical corpus. The UFAL medical corpus uh, is, um, man, uh, it was maintained and designed in Charles University during the um, Krishmoy and Key Connect project. Uh, mainly it's um, in the medical domain, it contains uh, in domain and um, uh, in domain data uh, and uh, general domain data. Uh, the, um, uh, in average, every uh, we have around from 25 million to 50 uh, million sentences, depending on the uh, uh, language pair. 
uh, between English and um, uh, Czech, German, uh, French, Spanish, Swedish, Polish, and Hungarian. Uh, so uh, also we have a uh, 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 test set, uh, query test set, and summary test set. Um, the query test set and uh, the query test set contains short uh, sentences and summaries contain uh, uh, more complete uh, sentences. So out from this, uh, uh, from these uh, uh, parallel sentences, we took uh, 10 million uh, sentences for each uh, for each domain and uh, for each uh, pair, and we used it in the unconstrained uh, unconstrained uh, systems. For the constrained systems, uh, we use Marian and MT framework to build the models. Uh, we train and first the uh, model on the official million data, uh, million data. Uh, we tokenized the data using MOSIS tokenizer and encoded it using uh, byte pair uh, encoding with the 32,000 merges. Uh, the model was based on the uh, transformer and the same parameter as uh, uh, reported by uh, Vaswani et al. Uh, we stopped training after five iterations uh, without getting any further improvement on the uh, tuning uh, test set. For unconstrained systems, we first trained the initial models uh, using the uh, Ophel Medical Corpus, uh, 10 million sentences. And then uh, after, we, um, uh, after the model stopped uh, improving, uh, we stopped training and then we continued training on the uh, media data as a uh, process of uh, fine tuning the model towards more specific domain from medical to coronavirus related uh, domain. Um, after that, we took the model that achieved the best blood score on the validation set. So this is our MT results, uh, unconstrained and uh, unconstrained. Uh, surprisingly, the constrained system outperformed our unconstrained system, we were, except English and German. Um, maybe because uh, here we have a few explanation for that. The, um, uh, the 10 million sentences we, uh, uh, we chose, they contain somehow um, a noise. Uh, like um, um, bad translation or in, uh, wrong ones. Um, and also the, um, the constraint data is very, um, uh, the domain is very specific. Uh, it's right that the, um, the, uh, the corpus we used is from, taken from the medical domain, uh, but it's still the um, uh, multiple uh, synonyms and expressions uh, appeared uh, newly with the, the COVID pandemic. So that can, uh, can be the case here. For the, uh, uh, should I move to the uh, second task or stop here for questions? No, I would do the, the whole uh, the whole presentation. Okay, okay. Uh, so for the uh, multilingual uh, semantic search, uh, we uh, participated in the monolingual and bilingual task. In the uh, monolingual task, we focused on the English, uh, uh, on, uh, on the English documents because uh, mainly most of the documents are in English. Um, um, 1.5 million, I remember some, something around this. Uh, so uh, the um, in the uh, bilingual task, we reduced the task from um, from bilingual into monolingual by translating the documents, uh, the queries. Sorry, by following the query translation approach. So we parts we translated the queries from uh, these four languages into English, and then we continued uh, dealing with the task as monolingual task, uh, where the documents and the queries are in one language, English. Uh, we uh, used the, um, uh, the uh, NMT models that we uh, designed during our participation in the machine translation for uh, to translate um, the queries. So for uh, the document uh, pre-processing and indexing, uh, we used all the fields from the documents, including uh, boilerplate. We found out that um, uh, in our previous uh, uh, experiments in different data set that uh, uh, doing some cleaning or ignoring uh, boilerplate might reduce the performance. So we took that into consideration in this task. And then we, uh, after we took all the text from the collection, we tokenized it using Moses tokenizer. Uh, we tried to map some um, uh, variations of COVID 
into one uh, uh, one cinema coronavirus. So in case you have uh, SARS COVID or in COVID or um, like around five variations mentioned in the report, we map them into uh, one um, uh, 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 one expression. Um, one might argue here that actually COVID is different from coronavirus, it's disease, right? But here we are co talking about coronavirus, but actually it's like, it's it, like we, we, we noted that in multiple, uh, like in the news uh, uh, on online or some um, for like some resources online that people actually uh, uh, misuse these two terms. Sometimes they refer to coronavirus as disease or the opposite. Uh, so uh, we wanted to see the um, uh, the effect of this um, uh, of this uh, mapping, and hopefully in the second round we will have more data to see how how much it affected the result. Uh, and we used Terrier for uh, indexing and uh, querying. So for the uh, uh, second task uh, subtask, uh, we uh, we were aiming at high recall. To achieve this, we limitized in uh, the uh, collection and the queries using uh, UD pipe, uh, uh, which contains around uh, 94 uh, uh, models for different languages. Uh, and um, uh, here are some statistics, statistics about the data after doing uh, limit, uh, limitization. You can see the uh, reduction of number of tokens and uh, uh, vocabularies between. So here we use the um, uh, the forms to create the queries. And here we use the limitized uh, version of the documents to create the, uh, sorry, the index, uh, the index. At the end, we had uh, two different indices. One is based on word forms and one based on um, word lemmas. Uh, for uh, the uh, task one, as I mentioned, we use the documents, uh, uh, we indexed the documents with their forms and we indexed the documents with their lemmas in uh, task two, uh, subtask two. As for runs, in the monolingual systems, we uh, submitted five uh, runs. In the first uh, four uh, runs, we used the uh, topic uh, uh, title to build the queries. And uh, we investigated different uh, uh, retrieval models, uh, your, um, including the Richlet model, uh, PL2F, and uh, two different uh, models for query expansions. Um, uh, using uh, Bose Einstein model uh, for um, uh, to calculate the uh, term uh, distribution uh, and uh, callback library divergence uh, as well. And in both query expansions, uh, we used um, uh, document, uh, top ten, uh, 10 documents and um, uh, top five terms uh, for, for uh, expansion. While in the fifth run, uh, we built the query using the uh, conversational field in the topic, not, uh, not using the query title. So uh, here um, uh, we want to, uh, to see how much uh, the new terms appeared in, in this field uh, will contribute to the uh, final uh, uh, performance. Here are some examples about uh, from the uh, query expansion. I just put them uh, now. I, I I thought it would be interesting to look at it. Actually, the uh, the, the results for query expansion uh, using this automated uh, um, method is quite um, irrelevant, I would say, uh, because of the um, maybe the distribution of these terms in the um, uh, in the documents. Uh, and also the assumption that um, uh, uh, the top retrieved documents are relevant. So maybe uh, this is a risky assumption in these models and uh, uh, that uh, some irrelevant terms are uh, used for expansion from, those, from some irrelevant documents. Uh, this is the result for uh, the subtask one. Uh, we report here uh, uh, P at 10 in uh, percentages. You can see the uh, um, the uh, actually uh, the fifth run in which we use the uh, uh, conversational uh, field got almost the um, um, the highest um, result in three uh, uh, models or um, systems uh, while using Dirichlet uh, uh, on the other side. Actually, run one and run five we use Dirichlet model in both of them. So apparently, Dirichlet model uh, uh, does quite well in uh, comparing to other models. Uh, the the only difference here between this French and English or German and English, actually, 
we you can you can see here the how much information we lost when we translated the queries uh, from French into English. So after after the translation process, uh, those systems are identical basically. So um, uh, you can see uh, the, um, the the degrading happened because of of uh, that uh, of the translation. So here, uh, this is PIAT10. Uh, and on the other uh, hand, we also reported the ND uh, CG at five, uh, which um, penalizes the uh, perform the uh, the rank of uh, of relevant uh, document. Uh, we we can still see the same that run uh, run one and run five uh, uh, got the um, gave the best uh, result in. Um, uh, in English and French for run one and German, Swedish and Spanish for uh, run five. And the performance actually for the query expansion uh, is quite uh, bad uh, compared to uh, um, to other models. And uh, this is uh, understandable as I uh, show it from the samples, most of the uh, expanded terms were uh, relevant to the uh, information, uh, information need. Um, yeah, and uh, also we report uh, uh, the um, uh, the performance of uh, 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 run five in subtask one and some uh, subtask two. So what's the difference here? Uh, here we are using the same model uh, run five, which uses the uh, conversational uh, field uh, on uh, using the index that uh, uh, that was built uh, on the document form uh, forms and the document lemmas. Uh, and here uh, we are trying to, uh, to uh, we are checking the uh, the, the precision average at uh, 0 0.10 of uh, recall uh, to see how much we gained from uh, from using limitized version. Actually, the the, uh, the there are some improvement in German and uh, and uh, Spanish, uh, but not the same in uh, in other languages like uh, English, French, uh, and uh, Swedish. We noticed here some um, some cases when the lim uh, limitizer couldn't give uh, a right um, um, uh, output. For example, especially with the acronyms. For example, the um, term uh, SARS or MARS were limitized to SAR and MAR. Uh, actually, they should remain the same SARS or MARS. But however, since they are limitized in both queries and um, and doc, uh, documents, and maybe there we don't have similar um, uh, similar terms to them. So basically, we, we don't know exactly how much this affected the final uh, the final uh, result. Uh, so in the future, in the second round, uh, in the first task, we will investigate the uh, uh, corpus filtering methods uh, for data cleaning, uh, and also we will uh, employ uh, back translation and transfer transfer uh, learning. Uh, using the uh, uh, the mon uh, mo monolingual data around the domain, for multilingual search, we are aiming at employing uh, embedding-based similarity uh, function for uh, for retrieval. And um, that's my presentation. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much, Shadi. Any any questions? Uh, hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. I'm audible. Hello, am I audible? Hello. Hello, I hear you. Please go ahead and make your right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks, Shadi, for the uh, presentation. I have just one question. Could you please uh, shed some light on why you chose to use the boilerplate text while indexing? Yeah. So the source of the um, uh, the source of the data uh, mainly is taken from the uh, web. And in some um, in some cases, we noticed that there are some informative terms in uh, in um, some part of the uh, web page, like keywords or um, um, mm, like some menu or other other fields. So mainly, if you use uh, if you use um, some stat uh, like statistical method, which such as just text or beautiful soap or something like this to clean the text, you might sacrifice a lot of text from the from the page, uh, from the main content. Uh, so um, uh, uh, as I mentioned, we did some experiment using uh, Clay uh, 2013 collection 
to compare the effect of uh, this very specific thing. Uh, what, what happens if we take the entire text or what happens if you use some statistical uh, uh, model to remove the uh, uh, boiler plate? And we've, we found that if we just simply remove just the HTML and JavaScript or GSS, uh, CSS codes, uh, uh, you will get the best, uh, the best result. And that was the motivation for us to do that here also. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Any other questions? Can I ask one question, Shani? Yeah, sure. Hi, I'm Giorgio. Uh, Hi. One thing, uh, have you used exactly the same uh, setting for subtask one and subtask two? I mean, when you mentioned run one up to run five for subtask one and two, are exactly the same uh, setting? Yeah, the only difference is the uh, index. Uh, okay. The index in uh, uh, in one, uh, as I mentioned, this is the only uh, the only difference. And also in the subtask two, we also limitize the query, which is like uh, intuitive, right? So we limitize uh, we limitize the queries and oh, we, okay. Use the same, okay. yep, right. we use the same index. Okay. And and maybe that that um, that might be other like my question on the opposite side. If I can share the index actually in the repository, if the mm -hmm. If the um, uh, the copyright of the data allows me to uh, share the index, I will be happy to uh, to upload them. Okay, we can uh, discuss that. Mm -hmm. I I have a question. If yes, please. Okay, so I'm one of the organizers of the MT task, and mm -hmm. I'm curious. Well, can you show again the conclusions of or your future work in MT, because. I don't know if you were assisting yesterday, but this is the opposite of what we saw with with e translation system. So yeah, you you will filter on um, okay, you you will increase the corpus, right? Yes, so this okay. filtering I meant for the uh, UFAL medical corpus. Yeah, I think it could be also the reason because you said yeah that also in your report in the conclusions that uh -huh. uh, your unconstrained systems have better or have uh, are worse than your constrained systems. Yes, and most and of this the is cases. Happen, happening the contrary in e translation, and e translation used just for unconstrained one of their systems is just WNT. About WMT, me. yeah, I, I saw it so yesterday and it was maybe, surprising. I have a hypothesis, maybe this is correct, that maybe UFAL is also a very specific domain. Could be this the reason? So you use in your unconstrained UFAL and I guess also our data or only UFAL? Uh -huh. uh, yeah, this is very good. This is this is very no, good point. It's something that I, I don't fully understand why this is happening. Yeah, I, I also had a, a question related to that. Is that you said that you didn't use the full you file, but a selection or something like that? If I understood it cor correctly. So, sorry, I didn't. Uh, I didn't yeah, hear you, you well. You mentioned, you mentioned something about uh, selecting part of of a file. Yes, yes, selecting uh, ten million uh, sentences, and uh, it was based on. Um, uh, it was actually like the selection uh, uh, method was based on uh, language model interpolation for more like domain specific data. Okay. Okay, so you, you use also in, okay, this is a file, but in your unconstrained system, you also used the, our, Yes. Our data, right? Yes, Both. so first, so first we used the, uh, uh, first we trained okay. the initial yeah. models on the uh, medical corpus, and then we continue training on uh, uh, media data. So I don't know, either is that uh, UFAL should be filtered well, or maybe uh -huh. UFAL is also very specific and is not that related with COVID. Yeah, absolutely. It's not. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like uh, I, I think th that uh, that's very like um, likely to be the case because um, when I look at the test, uh, when I look at the test uh, set uh, in this task, I can see that 
it is around COVID, but it's not really very medical, right? Like some people like post some mm -hmm. questions around COVID, but they don't use very advanced or terminology. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so maybe you are right. That's why using WMT only helped to... Uh, um, maybe the test was more about news about COVID. I don't know if, if Vasilis, if, if he's here or can confirm this or I don't know. Maybe it's not that medical. This is, yeah, this is my opinion. When I look at the, the, the test set here, I don't think it's very like, it's it's medical test set. It's what people usually ask around coronavirus. You know, can okay. I... If, if, uh, if I uh, add something? Yeah, sure, Vasilis. Yes. Uh, okay, one thing is the domain, which is coronavirus or uh, health or COVID or something, or medicine or something like this. And the other thing is the genre. Sorry, uh, I, think, other... I mean the genre, if it is news or let's say a, yeah. a scientific paper. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, as you probably understand, the, 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 um, the corpus mostly contains, let's say, everyday uh, talk about COVID, not uh -huh. something specific, something scientific. Uh -huh. mm. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah, of course. So probably this would be an explanation. Yeah. That, and uh, probably this this explanation this explains uh, the, the contrary uh, case, uh, the case that uh, e-translation succeeded to with WMT data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. Okay. The WMT is more yes. new related. I would remind all of you that the uh, target for all the initiative is the general public. So this is why we are using news uh, about COVID. Why, for example, in, uh, in uh, the relevance assessment of uh, task two, as we discussed yesterday, we, we used native speakers, but not uh, medical professionals uh, or, uh, or the like, because uh, we are really trying to do something for, for the general public. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and something more? Uh, sure. It is uh, true, uh, really understandable that uh, uh, everyday work is somehow translated or let's say uh, circulated around the web and uh, it is difficult to find uh, scientific papers translated in many languages so this is another case okay uh, i would have a question for you as well shadi if, if i correctly understood you conflated all the coronavirus, COVID, uh, whatever variants uh, into the same uh, token. But uh, uh, this uh, happened at the indexing level. So if uh, in the documents you found uh, variants of uh, coronavirus, you mapped everything to the same token or you did this for the queries, uh, uh, both. Uh, I mean, because uh, this obviously is the opposite uh, of what we did in, uh, in Padova with query reformulation and also manual uh, expansion. And it is a little bit different from uh, also what you did with uh, automatic uh, query expansion. So uh, I was just wondering if you can comment on this. Yeah, so uh, how we did it before indexing the documents, we went through the text and we simply replaced the uh, uh, variants. We mapped them into one, uh, into one expression and then we index the documents. For retrieval, we did the same. We took the queries, uh, the monolingual English queries or actually the translated queries because after translation, you might, you might get the same variants. So we took these variations and we replaced them. We mapped them to the same uh, uh, variant and then we did retrieval. Mm. Okay. And do you think this can have, uh, what kind of effect uh, on, on performances because it may somehow reduce the recall, but you were hoping to improve the precision. Uh, well, uh, I didn't report uh, the result uh, of uh, not doing this. So basically I cannot, but, but uh, the motivation of doing this was uh, from our participation in uh, CORD, uh, an IST uh, uh, track, uh, the, the track COVID. We participated in the track COVID task and we did the same. We replaced this, uh, uh, did the same mapping, uh, and we got uh, uh, we got some improvement when we did that. So we assumed that the same uh, the same would 
uh, happen here. But actually, like in trick, uh, trick COVID, the data was very like um, scientific uh, around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so maybe the domain here would be different. And um, as I mentioned, I'm um, uh, excited to try this on the second round. We will have this, uh, the, the, now we have some data so we can change our system and study the influence of, uh, of yeah. this mapping. And, and you can also tell this from, uh, from the queries. I mean, as Giorgio was explaining yesterday, we took part of the queries from track COVID and the part of the queries from the Bing query logs. Uh -huh. The identifiers are different, so you can easily spot them because we kept the same ideas for uh, track COVID queries. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And the track COVID queries are very much uh, well behaved because uh, uh, coronavirus is always coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2, uh, SARS-CoV-2 is always SARS-CoV-2. Uh -huh. It's, there is this precise scientific name. When, when you look at the queries from Bing, you have uh, whatever, coronavirus, coronavirus, COVID-19, uh, or uh, who knows. Yeah, exactly. In uh, scientific publications, people are more careful to use the right terms, but it's not on uh, online uh, search. Or... Maria, you have questions? Uh, yes, I had another question, uh, but um, Shadi, you didn't uh, have any slide about your bilingual runs, or did I? Um, because for, for the search subtasks, because yesterday when I was doing the overview, so for me, actually, for the bilingual run, it was interesting that you had this uh, round four having good scores, not mm -hmm. monolingual runs, but but uh, this is by uh, uh, sorry for confusion. This is bilingual run. Like the queries here are in uh, French, uh, German, Spanish, and English. Then they are translated. Uh, sorry, Swedish. Then they are translated into English, and then we did uh, retrieval. So in all in all cases, the documents are in English. In all systems, the documents are in English. So here. Okay. Here, queries are in English and documents in English. Here, this column is monolingual, and the other columns are bilingual. Language, bilingual source language in French, target in English. Okay. So, for example, I understand that the run one French to English is 58 out of 68, which is the top, Reference. let's say, monolingual mm -hmm. performance. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. Ah, okay. Okay. So, so, so uh, you asked about, uh, I, I saw your question yesterday about the bilingual. Um, uh, yes, the so I, I wanted to see the, what is the connection between the, those uh, scores and these ones. Yeah, yeah. So, so basically you can compare, like uh, you can compare this system like to, to, to the reference system mm -hmm. in the same language. Like uh, we, here we got like 38% comparing to 42, assuming that 42 is the best system we can achieve without like the perfect translation uh, scenario. Uh, and I saw the, um, I saw the uh, bad uh, performance you showed yesterday for ND, uh, NDC uh, GAD5. I think this happened because, I don't know when did you get the, uh, the plots because there was some bug in the Grail files. We, we, uh, we mentioned it. And it was fixed, um, um, I think, like 29 of December or something like that. So when did you did this evaluation you presented yesterday of our bilingual runs? Well, I took this latest scores, but we can uh, take it offline then to... Yeah, make... yeah because I, I looked at the repository. It was updated last time, 23rd of December. Yeah, I think uh, you sent the mail, Shadi, we, 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 we corrected it and uh, I, I sent around uh, uh, another email on, on the mailing list. If uh, it, there is any, some, any mess, it's me uh, messing up with a bit bucket, uh, push and, and pull, but it should be okay what we put uh, both in your repository and uh, in the overall organizer repository. 
Yeah, I will check it. But uh, yeah. just to conclude this, the uh, if we look at uh, NDCG and uh, uh, P at 10, uh, run four seems consistent between these two metrics comparing to other languages. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, so if there are, there are no other questions, uh, let's thank uh, Shadi uh, once more. Uh, in, in the agenda, uh, now we have uh, a 10 minute uh, break. Uh, we are five minutes behind the schedule, but uh, we are not uh, in an hurry today. So I think uh, we can do the, the 10 minutes, the full 10 minutes break uh, and uh, reconvene at uh, uh, 3.35 or something like that. Is that yeah. okay for everybody? Perfect. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Okay. See you in a few minutes then. See you guys. See you. Thank you. Exactly, with uh, Ignor, I guess, uh, if I'm right. Uh, sure. Yes, and you tell us about uh, gate and LP participation. All right. So should I share my screen? You should be able to do so, yes. Okay. Is it visible now? Yep. Perfect. Great. Just a second. Yep. So, okay. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm uh, Iknur Singh, a PhD student at University of Sheffield. I, on behalf of Carolyn Scarton and Kalina Bonchiva, I'm here to present our, the work of a team, GATE NLP, in task to multilingual semantic search. So uh, first talking about the contents, uh, which I'll be presenting. First, I'll give a brief introduction about the task, followed by uh, the problem which we are trying to solve then our proposed approach, which we use on all our experiments. Then I'll show you the results and finally the conclusion. So coming to the introduction, uh, as you all know that coronavirus pandemic has led to rapidly growing infodemic online. And during this crisis, researchers, journalists have been publishing a lot of content related to health, new guidelines and others. And this information comes from different parts of the world in multiple languages. Like, as you can see from this uh, image, like this was exactly, uh, the, uh, exactly the situation with everyone uh, during COVID, like how we were bombarded with lots of information uh, related to COVID, what is right, what is wrong, and the new uh, laws and guidelines, etc. So accurate retrieval of reliable relevant data from millions of documents about COVID-19 has become urgently needed for general public as well as other stakeholders. So coming to the problem, uh, we want to build effective semantic source system and it should be capable of accurate retrieval of reliable relevant data. Second, it should retrieve fast, like we cannot wait for uh, us to get the relevant data. And last, our system should also be capable to uh, extract information in a cross-lingual setting. So uh, we present this multi-stage by cross-encoder approach, which is uh, basically a sequential three-stage ranking pipeline uh, where the first stage is a lexical-based uh, retrieval using BM25 algorithm. 
Then there are two neural stages, which includes bi-encoder and cross-encoder models, which are used to rank effectively uh, the documents with respect to the query. Now in the coming slides, I'll discuss each of these phases in detail. In the first phase, that is the BM25 ranking phase, we use Elasticsearch for initial retrieval. And uh, this uh, BM25 is basically used to reduce the search space from large number of documents to a small set of possibly relevant documents. Also, the data set provided by the organizer was in, uh, was in uh, XML file. So we just considered the text inside the P tags and have excluded all the boilerplate tags. Uh, also, we use uh, some pre-processing methods such as stop words removal and lemmatization before indexing the documents. Now, uh, talking about the type of queries we use in our experiments, first one is the concatenated, concatenated version of keyword and conversational field. Second, we use the UDLs query from the trick COVID challenge. Uh, so it is it was basically a method uh, proposed by the University of Deleva participant in trick COVID challenge. And it was also used by many other participants, participants as it uh, proved to be effective and gave slight increase in performance in results. Third, we use a T5 query uh, where we generated queries from the keyword and the conversational field. So, so in this, basically we use this doc to query model, which was initially proposed to expand the documents before uh, indexing, but we use this model to expand the query to check how well does it perform. If we rewrite the query, if we rewrite the query and concatenate it all, and then perform the retrieval using this T5 query. Now coming to the neural refinement phase, uh, which is the phase where we use a bi-encoder model to encode both query and document individually into contextualized representations. Now, as the vector space is same, both the query and the relevant document lie in proximity of each other and can be efficiently retrieved using Kazine similarity. So now, how they uh, lie uh, in proximity of each other? For this, we trained a bioencoder model on TC plus IFCN data. Now, this TC plus IFCN data is a combined version of a trick COVID and IFCN data. So trick COVID is uh, the relevance judgment from the trick COVID challenge. And the IFCN data is the data we collected, which consists of COVID-19 debunks. So here we use the claim part as the query and the debunk text as the document. Because uh, the, the fact-checking website in the debunking website, they were kind of explaining the claim uh, in more detail. So this is the reason we also tried this data set to fine tune a transformer based model using Siamese network architecture to get semantically meaningful sentence representations. So this is very similar to what Remus did uh, in case of uh, sentence bird, where he showed that uh, with vanilla bird, you, can, you don't get good sentence representation. That is the contextualized representation. So he fine tuned those models using this Siamese network to get uh, the representation which can be compared. So, also, as these representations are separate, the bioencoder can store and reuse this encoded representation of inputs for faster prediction during inference. Now, uh, we also, we don't just compare the complete document with the query, we compare on a sentence level uh, in which where we extract sentence level evidence where the relevance score of each document uh, is determined by combining top case scoring sentences in the document. Last, uh, this stage will help us filter out all these semantically unrelated documents uh, retrieved from the BM25 phase. Coming to the final phase, that is the neural re-ranking phase. Here we use uh, a cross encoder model to perform full attention over the query and the document pair to get the relevance score, which is used to rank the final list of documents with respect to the query. So as you can see from this uh, diagram, uh, here we input both the query tokens and the document tokens or the sentence token because we are comparing at a sentence level 
separated by separated by a separator token which are passed to the transformer based model and the output of cls token is passed to the linear layer with sigmoid activation to get the relevance score from 0 to 1 so for most of the runs, we directly use the output of the cross encoder, but for some runs, we also combined score, scores from previous stages uh, using uh, fusion algorithms, which include both score-based algorithm and the rank-based fusion algorithms. For score-based method, we use weighted COMSUM, and for rank-based fusion algorithm, we use RF, RF, and border fusion. So, here in this diagram shows a uh, example of how many documents we re-rank in each phase. So if we consider English documents, there are around 1.4 million documents. First, we retrieve uh, around 1000 documents using the BM25 ranking phase. Then we apply neural refinement phase uh, on these 1000 documents to retrieve top 400 documents. And uh, similarly, we apply uh, the neural re-ranking phase on these 400 documents to extract top 200 documents. So here are some of the differences between the bioencoder and cross encoder. So as I taught, the representations in case of bioencoder can be cached. And this is what makes them fast uh, as compared to the cross encoder where you cannot uh, save and store the representation because we need to input the query and the document every time during inference. So this makes them slow and uh, not uh, they don't scale well for large scale research. And uh, second, in case of bioencoder, as we encode separately, so there are no interactions between the query and the document. So it makes them less accurate. Whereas for cross encoder, as we jointly encode both the query and the document uh, due to the rich interaction and full attention over both these uh, sentence pairs, we get more accurate result. And this is the reason we uh, uh, re-rank less number of documents in case of cross encoder and more, of, more documents in case of a bioencoder. So here are some of our results. Uh, on left, you can see our monolingual English runs. And on right, you can see monolingual Spanish runs. Uh, as you can see, our runs uh, outperformed all other runs, and that too by a significant margin. Uh, and uh, if you see this uh, monolingual English runs here, uh, the run five performs the best. In the next slide, I'll tell you what uh, uh, this run is using. and. Except this, all other runs uh, basically differ in the type of query, the type of model which we are using in the bioencoder and the cross encoder, and the fusion algorithms which we are using. So in this, uh, you can see uh, some of some of uh, some of more results, uh, uh, which includes the monolingual French runs and monolingual German runs, and uh, in in the bilingual. Uh, runs we didn't do anything complex we just uh, converted the the query into the uh, language of the document using google translator and uh, we just extract the documents on in a monolingual setting and also we find that uh, our runs uh, had a dual benefit of achieving both high precision at the top prime documents as well as high recall for all the retrieved documents so coming to the conclusion, uh, first, we found that multi-state by cross encoder to be highly effective at achieving state of art performance on wide range of metrics, which includes precision, uh, uh, discounted cumulative gain, R precision, and high recall for all the documents. Also, we found that fine tuning by encoder and cross encoder model on this TC plus IFSEN data or cross TC plus IFSEN data, which is just a uh, translated version of the TC plus IFSEN data. And this data we use to train uh, our multilingual model. So it proved to be beneficial and it helped us in achieving higher scores. For monolingual English runs, fine tuning the bioencoder model trained on STS data gave the highest score. So this is the gate uh, NLP run five, which I was talking in last to last slide. For monolingual runs other than English, where we use multilingual models, the score of German runs were comparatively higher, followed by the French and Spanish runs, respectively. So this is what we analyze, after, uh, put 
uh, this is what we analyze after comparing the top scores from these uh, german french and spanish runs and overall we we find that runs which use key conf that is a concatenated version of keyword and conversation field uh, the runs which use this as query perform better than util query and t5 query apart from this we couldn't find any single model which perform good for all the languages as different models and methods give different uh, results for different metrics for future rounds we plan to make further improvements to our approach as well as extensively explore bicross encoder for document retrieval for future research thank you so much for your time uh, here you can find uh, the link to our report and looking forward to your questions thank you thank you very much for the very good talk ignore uh, any questions uh, May I please? Yes. Sure. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for the uh, nice presentation. Oh, well done. So uh, I have um, two questions. Basically, did you consider using like the, the main um, the main issue with this uh, approach is the um, uh, time complexity, right? Uh, so, like, uh, could you please give us some tips about benchmarking? Like, for example, how much did it take to finish one run for one query or yeah yeah sure so uh, we didn't actually calculate uh, the uh, the time for each of our runs but we uh, we the thing which we uh, we considered was you know uh, giving more number of documents to rerank to bm25 then the bm uh, then the second phase that is the bioencoder phase because it is fast then the cross encoder which is slow so this is this is the thing which we made sure that uh, because we we cannot wait just for a long time so we made sure that the documents which the cross encoder is re-ranking uh, re re is less as compared to the bio encoder due to the uh, computation power required and the time constraint thanks so so um like going from one uh, 1000 documents to um to 400 or and then 200 like are we talking on in one single gpu about one minute or one hour or one day or i'm sorry i just like this is very interesting so i want to know the uh... yeah sure so yeah it is done on single gpu but as i talked about uh, in the second phase that is the bioencode phase the representations can be cached so what i did was i initially cached all the representation Oh. and stored it on my local drive. So then it just takes few seconds to retrieve oh. using the bioencoder phase. You can, uh, I, I, ref, uh, I should uh, uh, give you reference to that uh, paper, which is also mentioned on my slides, the Remus paper. So he also demonstrated that how fast the bioencoder, which is the sentence birth models are as compared to the cross encoder model. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, one more question. Did you consider using some, uh, uh, like dimensionality reduction to speed up the uh, search or using some like library like face to in to index the embeddings hmm. yeah for, yeah, for cluster question. clustering the embeddings i mean yeah yeah a good question uh, so uh, this is what i plan to do in future because files is very helpful when we have a large number of documents mm -hmm. but yeah. in our case uh, because we didn't have that much large documents i didn't use but this can be used if we are implementing this in, you know, actual or uh, deploying this for actual use, then using FIS makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you. Any other questions, uh, comments? Uh... Uh, yes, I have one question. So thank you for the presentation. Uh, for the re-ranking part, the last part after the CMS bird. Um, was the model, I, I guess it was retrained, but did you fine tune somewhere? Because I, maybe I skipped the part where you were saying that, but uh, was it trained somewhere? Yes, yes. So, uh, so you can find the details on a paper, but just let me give you a brief overview. So in the last phase, uh, we have an English model where we use Electra based model, which is, which has been tra trained on the MS Marco data set. And okay. we fine tuned it on our cross, uh, on our TC plus IFSEN data. 
but for the runs other than monolingual english runs uh, such as spanish french and german mm-hmm. we use multilingual model so this multilingual model we use uh, the multilingual model to train on a cross tc plus ifcn data which i was talking in the last slide that it, it is a translated version of the, of tc plus ifcn data so for those uh, multilingual models i fine tune them on this cross tc plus ifcn data okay thanks yeah, yeah. So, so basically you, you you work at the, in a much much larger space uh, if uh, you use these uh, multilingual models for it, it, they were performing a, a kind of super expansion uh, for uh, for everything yeah 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 and uh, it will work for other languages as well uh, but i haven't tried uh, because uh, the the languages for which i submitted runs i translated the tc plus ifcn data to those languages so so uh, it is giving high scores for those languages but we need to try how well they perform for the other languages given we have the multilingual models for both mm-hmm. bioencoder and cross encoder this is also what i plan to try in future rounds to uh, you know uh, try them in a zero shot setting like how well do they perform on other languages yeah okay may i have a question as well Yes. Sure. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, following the Charlie's question and the Nicola's consideration, uh, can you also give us some um, inspiration about the size of the model? Probably the middle representation and also the wall uh, data you mentioned you storing on the data, uh, data store. I mean, uh, how how much memory you need in, in the runs and also for uh, like saving the vocabulary and vocabulary size yeah yeah so uh, so first uh, all my runs are performed on a titan uh, gpu single gpu only and uh, regarding the size of the models uh, again i would say you refer to our paper because we use different models in the bioencoder itself we use two uh, two models which were english and two i guess multilingual models no one multilingual model but in the cross encoder phase uh, we use uh, i guess two uh, again two english uh, models and two multilingual models so uh, these models differ in size so the base model in these uh, the base model which is transformer based model which i have taken uh, they also differ like for xlm based model uh, it is impossible to fine tune them on this huge data set given the time limit we had so we i used the base version of them and in case of the robota models i for some of the models i used robota large model and for some i also use base and distilled version distilled versions you can uh, check the details about a models on a paper like i have uh, described all the models as well as for which runs i use which model yeah what about the number of vocabulary and uh, dimension uh so yeah uh, this is also what differs like the large models give output in uh, around 1024 dimensions vector but in case of small models such as bird base we get 768 dimensions if this is what you are asking yeah um okay and uh, also following that uh, what about the size of the model that you uh, mentioned you were storing on it uh, but i am asking because of like uh, this like uh, i i'm trying to understand how much the uh, model can uh, i mean the dimension of the hidden layer of the model I'm trying to understand uh, the vocabulary size and uh, uh, yeah, yeah. is it possible to do it in for multilingual this is my okay. question okay so uh, one thing i i would like to clear is i didn't uh, you know made my own model but i used the transformer based model which are already there like the pert the xlm the uh, the okay. robeta model so their architecture we took the same architecture but just added like for the cross encoder we just added a linear layer with sigmoid activation and trained them using a binary cross entropy loss or sigmoid cross entropy loss but for mm-hmm. the bioencoder model uh, we took the representations for each of the token and we pooled them so we used mean pooling to get a single representation for the complete query or the sentence so yeah mm-hmm. okay fine thanks 
I have a final question for, for, for you, Igna. That's more a side question. Uh, uh, you actually submitted uh, two kinds of runs uh, because uh, you noticed uh, a critical thing of this uh, collection that uh, there are many near duplicates, which okay. actually are not uh, duplicates in the sense that you have the same document twice, uh, by some uh, mistake, it is that uh, uh, news sites are uh, basically relaunching the same news item more and more, typically copy verbatim part of the news item and adding one sentence or uh, just changing the title. Uh, so th this is something we have to, uh, to look into. Uh, also for the relevance assessment, but it's part of the reality in this uh, in this kind of uh, pandemics uh, flooding because everybody says the same thing. Uh, since you did two sort of runs, one with and one without the duplicates, did you notice differences? Uh, have you any insights on this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A good question. So, uh, um, so first, Nicola. Uh, the finding duplicates basically depends on how we are pre-processing the data, right? Uh, uh, because uh, if we are pre-processing in different way, we might not get all the duplicates. So the way in which I was pre-processing, uh, I found I also evaluated uh, those runs which uh, which excluded all the duplicates, that is the deduplicated version. And I just did this for the English runs, not for all the runs, just for the monolingual English runs. And I found that the scores for those runs were comparatively lower because uh, I've also had the reason because uh, in case of the current runs which you're evaluating, they include all the duplicates. So if we have two uh, similar documents, uh, like, like if you have two documents run at uh, second, third position. So if, if even one of them is relevant, is judged as relevant, then uh, in case of uh, uh, normalized, discounted, cumulative gain or precision, you'll get high scores, obviously, because we have two uh, similar documents at second and third position. So I found that uh, my scores for the deduplicated runs reduced as compared but, to the... Uh, yes, and this is, can, can be also an issue from, from the pooling point of view, because if uh, systems, participating system, push to the top uh, near duplicates and we do top K uh, pooling, uh, we uh, end up uh, having the, those duplicates uh, in the pool. But uh, the, the reason uh, why your the duplicated runs were performing less well was uh, that uh, not duplicated, but potentially relevant uh, documents didn't uh, end up in the pool because they were uh, uh, lower in the rank uh, since the duplicates and if you remove the duplicates they end up higher and in that case they would have entered in the pool yep okay so uh, maybe we continue this uh, uh, offline but at the end we may ask you to uh, you know that we had some issues with uh, your repo but uh, checking everything, we may ask you uh, to, to give us one, again one of the, uh, the duplicated runs to, to check the position of uh, uh, possible additional relevant documents if uh, they, they, they go too low uh, due to the presence of uh, duplicates and that they do not enter in the pool as a consequence. Sure. Sure, right. I, I, I have also uh, uh, in uh, the way you have, uh, you know, uh, organized all our folders, my duplicated runs are already present on uh, the repo, but I also share, uh, share with you the results of it, how much yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you know that I had some troubles with, uh, with your repo, so yeah. we, we will do a sanity check to ensure what, what we get uh, together. Okay. Right, right. Perfect. Thank you. No Any problem. other questions? Great. Thank you very much for, uh, for your talk. And so uh, we can move uh, uh, to the next uh, speaker, who is uh, uh, Jose.
Are you here? Yeah. Hello. 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 Ah, uh, is it working? Yeah. Yes, so you have to stop sharing, Iknar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just wait a second. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, done now. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, okay. I think it is sharing now. Yeah. Is Perfect. it? All right. Well, um, I am Jose Alberto Mesa Murgado. I am from the University of Hyam in Spain. Um, I'm part of a research group called CINEA, in which we focus our study on the natural language, uh, the human natural language, and for which we have uh, developed several data sets and tools in Spanish specifically. So for our participation, um, our group thought that the uh, Emilia initiative is, uh, in the Emilia initiative is mainly due to the awareness that, well, COVID-19 has arrived over, all over the world. And well, considering that it is uh, a concern from the, uh, the year 2020, and I we believe that it will be a trending topic also over the current year. Also, it is due because of the countless number of papers that are being published every day into the public. So, because of these two reasons, we thought that it was an interesting topic for, for us and to which we could be uh, contribute. So for our first entry, we, our initial plan was to deal with both task one and task two, but unfortunately we, had, we did uh, a late description. And also we found that, uh, well, we, we couldn't really deal with task one because uh, of the the lack of annotated uh, corpus, which I think it was something that yesterday was mentioned, and so given that fact and the time we had available, we decided to focus only on the task two to be the uh, well in my in our case an Spanish monolingual uh, uh, information retrieval system and. So our idea was to uh, deal with task two and both of his self-tasks under the same methodology. So basically what we did was to first review uh, the corpus that was given and we extracted from it using beautiful SOAP, uh, document title, its keywords and the content. And through Elastic, we use Elastic Search as a framework and we index every single one of the documents that were available. And we then decided to perform a series of uh, queries uh, that are visible in this table using the different uh, patterns or, or terms that were given uh, as a topic. So for example, CNA1 uh, 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 used the keywords and over uh, every part of the document, I, I mean the title, its key associated keywords, and the content of the document, which for our case will be all the paragraphs of the document. We, uh, we avoided um, all the menus and sections and etc. And with this in mind, uh, and given time we had available, as I, as I mentioned, we decided to, to, to take the default parameters of the Elasticsearch uh, similarity model, which uses PM25, um, through a more like this uh, query, we uh, we did or we, we performed uh, a search for every one of the topics that were given for for this task. So, um, well, for our results that. We, we noticed that uh, for SUTAS 1, uh, even though it was a simple approach, and we, we know that uh, we score high, we, we have a, a nice score, and we see that uh, our precision was was nicely. It, it retrieved uh, from a range of the 25 to 30% of the relevant documents, which we think is a good score. And 
for their goal, if we had uh, also a, a good result as we retrieve uh, the same as uh, between uh, 20 to 30 percent of the relevant documents. So um, also for subtask does uh, subtask two we participated and um, we noticed that uh, our result is going high higher, but yeah this is uh, consequent with the reduction of the number in of the number of retrieved documents that we had to retrieve within every every query. So um, this time we had a better uh, results in both uh, precision and, and recall. And that's what we noticed uh, from within all the comparisons that were given to us. Um, but still, uh, well, as a discussion for us, we think we, we want to uh, highlight that this is the first preliminary uh, approach we have done uh, for our participation. And we want to mention that uh, the shortage of participants for for the for both subtask didn't allow for a well, a major comparison between the systems and to uh, to uh, discern better our results. Um, but still, uh, due to that, we believe that we have to still make improvements for our system for our systems in both terms, precision and recall, uh, with specific uh, emphasis on the data. So. Um, our research group is actually specialized in the name entity recognition task. Um, our aim is to, uh, for the round two, to participate also in task one, given the annotated corpus, and apply the knowledge we we uh, we have received through the identification of the entities into the queries and as such, uh, improve the results we might obtain in, in the Second round. Um, well, that's it, <laughs> pretty much. Thank you very much for listening to me. Um, I'm more than glad to answer any question that you may you may have. Thank I think you I may. Much, Jose. Um, any questions? Any doubts? Curiosity. So uh, you, you you told that you you used the, the different uh, fields uh, of uh, uh, of the queries uh, uh, basically combine either in, in isolation or combining them. Uh, do you think that uh, you could uh, do so? I mean, in 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 the other talks. Uh, we, we saw that some sort of expansion uh, uh, plays a, a, a good role in, uh, in uh, improving performance. So um, do you think it could be uh, something feasible in, in your context? Uh, for oh. your round? I think, uh, well, I think it was mentioned yesterday that uh, we've, we've noticed that we've scored, we have scored uh, higher when given the keywords and the conversational features. Um, but besides that, we haven't noticed uh, any particular uh, differentiation between the runs, to be honest. Okay. Any other questions? <clears throat> okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Jose. You're welcome. Uh, I remind uh, both uh, you and also Ignor to please uh, push uh, your slides uh, uh, to the Git report so that uh, by the end of the day, uh, I can uh, uh, commit everything. Uh, the same repository, all right. I grab them, I link them to the agenda, and then I publish the, the video of today on YouTube, and we are done for today and ready for, for tomorrow. Khalid, do you, do you wish to add anything? No, I think we, uh, let me see if my microphone is open, yes. Uh, no, I think the, uh, 
it's good to see that uh, people have different approaches, use different uh, pieces of, uh, of, of data, including the uh, in the in constrained uh, version. What will be really uh, important, uh, and this is what we will be uh, discussing tomorrow, is uh, in addition to the uh, next uh, speakers about what they did in different tasks, the next round, how we can use what uh, you all uh, did, including uh, uh, the approaches, but uh, those who use different data, uh, can we uh, benefit from that knowledge to add more data to our uh, set and, and so on. So I think uh, we will have a very nice uh, piece of uh, discussion tomorrow, and I'm looking forward to that. Okay, so uh, if there are uh, no other comments or questions or anything uh, you wish uh, to raise, uh, we may uh, close the meeting for, uh, uh, for today and uh, reconvene uh, tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow we have uh, the start is at 2, uh, so uh, too sharp, a little bit earlier than today because it is quite a packed day. We have quite a lot of talks. Uh, the Zoom meeting details are the same as today, while the details for the live streaming on YouTube will change because every day you need to generate a new live stream URL for, uh, for YouTube. Yeah. So it's two o'clock European, uh, Central European time for those yes. who are in the Greek uh, or India or whatever time zone. Yeah. It's two o'clock uh, Paris, Rome, Berlin time. Okay. So good afternoon to everybody. Thank you very much for participating and for uh, all the talks and uh, inspiring discussions. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.